Hello everybody, welcome to an introduction to computers. My name is William Drescher and in this lesson we're going to be talking about the basics of computer memory. So what is computer memory? It's basically the way the computer stores data and what, how it remembers what you do while it's turned on. Uh, memory is stored in bits which is a combination of the word binary digit and a bit can either be on or off in the computer, which also equates to a 1 or a 0, respectively. Uh, a bit is the most basic form of memory, so if you can get the smallest amount of memory you can possibly have in the computer is 1 bit. That's it. It's either a true or a false, a 1 or a 0. So how does the computer actually use this to keep track of information? Well, data in a computer is divided into cells. One cell is a pattern of eight bits. So you get a pattern of ones and zeros that is eight bits long. And that is one cell. A cell is also known as a byte. So one byte of data is worth eight bits. So it's kind of like saying one dollar is worth twenty-five, or no, <laughs> one dollar is worth four quarters. So one byte is worth eight bits, and bytes are then grouped into words. So four bytes all squished together is equal to one word. That's usually in most systems. You can sometimes get a system that is can have two bytes is a word or maybe six bytes is a word but it's more common that four bytes is a word so each word is assigned an address in memory so each address it, it's always ordered from the lowest to the highest and it starts at zero so if you wanted to store some data in there let's go back to the water in the cups example you have your glasses essentially then they are your words so the glass if you line them up on a table and you numbered all the glasses you'd start with zero and then count upwards so your first glass is actually glass zero and your second glass is glass number one so if you wanted to put two pints of water into a glass that's quite a lot of water in one glass you would put it in the first glass at zero and you pour the water in and then you put say five pints in glass number one and you pour that in so basically it's a way of keeping track of which glass has how much in it it's just a it's just a labeling system really so there are two main types of memory there's random access memory or RAM and read-only memory, or ROM. Random access memory essentially works like this. It's the main memory of the computer, so the computer will always look to it first to look for the data it needs. It's the short-term memory of the computer, so when you turn the computer off, it essentially just gets rid of it. So you you need a different source to keep your data after you turn the computer off which we'll get to in a moment it stores data before it's saved to a file so essentially if you want to if you're using word whatever you're currently typing into the Microsoft Word program that data is stored in RAM it's later when you hit the save button it stores it to a file which takes it out of RAM so you keep it when you turn the computer off. And just a little bit of information, the standard amount in a computer is 2 gigabytes, which is abbreviated to GB, not Great Britain, it's gigabytes. And nowadays, you usually will see probably four, uh, and sometimes eight in, if you have like a production computer for making videos and things, you'll probably see eight gigs in there. But some computers you'll see it upwards to 32 gigabytes which is a lot of RAM but it essentially lets you hold bigger files without saving them and that can essentially make your computer faster as well 
So read-only memory is the long-term memory of the computer. It's also the second storage choice for the computer. Some, a few examples of read-only memory are CDs and DVDs that when you, if you put a CD in and you burn all your music to it, that's the term for putting data onto a CD, by the way, is burning. If you burn your, your music to your CD, then you're essentially permanently putting it on that CD. You can't write to it again. You can only read from it. So it's read-only memory. Now, are the, there are these interesting things called hard disk drives in your computer. They're a form of long-term memory, but they can also be written to and read from multiple times. The only, the only downside of this is it's a lot slower than RAM to write to a hard disk drive, so the computer prefers to use RAM instead of the hard drives to kind of flip-flop information in and out. So like if you're editing in Word and you had to write to the hard drive every time you pressed a key, it would take you hours just to write a sentence. So hard disk drives are useful because they'll keep the memory that is written to it even after the computer is turned off, but they aren't essentially fast enough to be used as the main memory of the computer. Okay, so let's run through a quick review here. Memory is stored in 8-bit patterns. Those 8 bits are known as a byte. You take four of those bytes and put them together and you get a word. Now keep up, there's a lot of numbers in here. I know it's really difficult. Words are organized using their addresses and it allows you to find where the words are in the computer. It's essentially just like the addresses on a house. It tells you where the house is so an address on the word tells you where that word is and where the data is that you want. There are two types of memory, RAM and ROM, random access memory and read-only memory. And then there are these things called hard disk drives, which allow you to read and write to them, but at slower speeds than RAM. So they're not, inc they're not all read-only, but they're still slower than RAM. All right, that's all I have for this lesson. If you have any questions or suggestions, feel free to send me an email, wilkuacode at gmail.com. There will be a link in the description of this video if you're on YouTube. If not, it's on screen. Make sure you leave your name. I'll try it. If it's a good enough question, I may even feature it in one of the videos. Also, make sure to subscribe to my channel. That way you'll know when the newest tutorial videos come out and you'll be able to keep up with news going on with newer tutorials that will show up later. So that's all the time I have for today and see you guys later. Bye.